Ladies and gentlemen, please take a seat. Now, after the Cyprus session, it's my great honor and pleasure to welcome His Excellency Ahmed Davutoglu, the Prime Minister of Turkey. And as we all know, Turkey is such an important country, particularly given now all the many challenges the global community is facing, geopolitical or humanitarian challenges. And it's not necessary to introduce His Excellency Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu. Only one sentence. We all know he's a really good friend of the World Economic Forum, of the global community. So, Excellency, a warm welcome, and now the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Philip, for this nice and short introduction. Uh, when we talk on Turkey's global role, we have to make reference to Turkish geography and history. When I wrote my book in 2001 about Turkish role in the world, I said, I wrote that two things you cannot change, geography and history. You can change everything else, but no nation can specify the geography and history. They are given. When we look at the geography and history of Turkey, there are many assets as well as many challenges because of this geographical location. We are right at the center of uh, Afro-Euro-Asia. It might be used, this geography, as a, as a center of economic activities as well as a threat of many uh, risks. And in this sense, it is up to the political authorities to decide and what to do. What I say is the flow of history is in and around Turkey in these years and in the past as well. In this sense, when we look at the summits we participated or hosted in last one, month, one year, from October 2015 until October 2016, you can see the main subjects of global issues. We had Global Forum on Migration, the most comprehensive forum on migration, October 2015. Then we chaired and hosted G20 Summit in November 2015. And first time ever in the last 13 years, we had Turkish EU Summit, 29th of November. And this year, we will be hosting OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation Summit, where all the leaders of the Muslim world will be coming, which is very important forum to discuss all challenges. And then in May, we will be hosting World Humanitarian Summit, again, the first ever summit on humanitarian issues organized by UN and Turkey is hosting. Then we will be also hosting World Energy Summit in October. You can see migration, humanitarian summit, energy summit, political summits, and of course G20 summit. Here, when we look at this schedule, we can see the significance of Turkish contribution on different issues. There has been several big challenges in the last 25 years in and around Turkey and in the global sphere. In the last 25 years, I always say earthquakes. First, we had geopolitical earthquakes in 1991. There was a big geopolitical challenge around Turkey from uh, Balkans to Central Asia many frozen conflicts. Then we had security earthquake in 9-11 uh, against several in Afghanistan, in Iraq, fighting against security risks. Then we had global economic crisis, another big earthquake, and Arab Spring, both economic volatility and many challenges because of Arab Spring around us. And now we have humanitarian earthquake because of refugees. I will make uh, refer to three dimensions about the role of Turkey and global agenda. The first is humanitarian dimension. Today, everybody in the world, whether in Europe or in US or in Turkey or in China, people are talking on refugees and migration. There are 73 million refugees and 125 million IDPs and refugees who need urgent uh, humanitarian assistance. And Turkey is the biggest refugee hosting country in the world. So the global agenda is refugee and migration, and Turkey is right at the center of all this discussion. It is very interesting. 
human mobility is the basic parameter to understand history. In these days, last week, for example, Istanbul Airport, Atatürk Airport, became the third biggest airport in Europe in the, uh, in the sense of the number of passengers after London and Paris. We were fourth before, now we, we were receiving more passengers than Frankfurt. We are the third. And now we are building the first, the biggest airport of the world in Istanbul. So Istanbul, with 150 million passengers. So Istanbul is becoming the center of human mobility for trade, for business, for positive agenda. But the same Istanbul and Turkey is becoming the place of refugees. So human mobility is over us. And what we are trying to do is to do everything possible to help humanitarian, uh, to, to help refugees and people who need humanitarian assistance, and also try to have human mobility for economic development. Here, we are, we, today we have 2.5 million refugees in Turkey. 2.5 million refugees from Syria only. 300,000 from Iraq, altogether around 3 million. And what we spend only for camps is now approaching to $10 billion. Only for camps, which is 280,000 people, almost 10% of all refugees in Turkey. We have 700,000 school age refugees. 62,000 babies were born in our camps. So suddenly, the health service, education service in Turkey had to increase. In some towns like Kilis, we have more Syrians living in Kilis than original Turkish citizens. This is a big challenge. We are talking everywhere, and tomorrow in Germany also, we will be talking with Angela Merkel, and we, in Turkish EU summit, and with UN, we are talking. This is not a Turkish crisis. This is not even now a Syrian crisis. This is a global crisis. All international agencies, institutions, states must work together for this purpose. Not only for humanitarian assistance to Syrian refugees. From this humanitarian perspective, we are the biggest, one of the biggest donor country to, uh, to Palestine, to Somalia, and Turkey is every year spending $3.5 billion for development and assistance program. So we are just at the center of this humanit global humanitarian agenda. And in humanitarian summit in Istanbul, 23rd and 24th of May, we will be t talking uh, with world leaders on this issue. Second is strategic dimension. Unfortunately, because of these geopolitical and economic uh, uh, I mean, depressions and geopolitical fluctuations, crisis. Now, Turkey had to have many challenges around. One of these challenges is fragile states. There are six, seven countries around Turkey. They are all neighbors, and we respect all of them. But the central governments cannot control the whole territory recognized by international law, like Syria, like Iraq, like Ukraine like Libya, even like Lebanon, like Yemen, centrally, internationally recognized central government does not have full control. And in the case of Syria, the central government is committing war crimes against civilians. We have frozen conflicts. We don't know when it, they may blow up, like Abkhazian question, like Nagorno-Karabakh, and many other frozen conflicts around Turkey. And of course, we have terrorist threats. All this agenda, fragile states, frozen conflicts, threat of terrorism, is global agenda. But Turkey is right at the center. And we, what we want to see is stability. Turkey is an, an island of stability in this very fragile uh, surrounding neighborhood. We had two elections last, the, last year, very democratic elections. In the last election, there was 85% turnover, participation to the election, which is the highest in all the modern democracies, and 97% uh, representation in, in the parliament, again, which is one of the highest, and our party received 49.5%, which is a very big support from the people. So strategic and political challenge around us is instability. But why we are so uh, having self-confidence? Because in Turkey, we have a stable political uh, framework. After the first election, 7th of June, there were certain ambiguities. Now, we don't have this type of ambiguities, and we are uh, 
uh, we, we declared already a very comprehensive reform, political reform agenda, but at the same time, we are working very hard to find solutions for the crisis in our surrounding regions and for all the crises in the global agenda. Meanwhile, I want to mention that Syrian political uh, process, Turkey will support. And today I had a meeting with Ban Ki-moon. We said that Turkey will be supporting any initiative for a political solution in Syria. Except the only criteria we want to have is the moderate opposition should be represented by their own will and initiative. And there should not be any representation of terrorist groups around the table, and we hope there will be some solution. Whatever happens, Turkey will be siding with Syrian people. Turkey will be helping Syria as our neighbor, and one day we hope that there will be stability. And fighting against terrorism, against Daesh, in Syria and in Iraq, is our priority. To fight against terrorism in different forms, Daesh and PKK, or the HKPC, we don't see any difference between these terrorist groups. They are killing people, they are killing innocent civilians in Turkey, in Syria, in Iraq, in Paris, in Ankara, in Istanbul, everywhere. So therefore there is a need of a solidarity of all international uh, actors to fight against terrorism. Our presence and uh, in, Iraq, in Syria and in Iraq in the sense of supporting moderate forces will continue to fight against terrorism. The last but not least important ish dimension is economic dimension. Because many of these crises did emerge because of economic conflicts as well. The economic, global economic crisis and volatility is continuing. And unfortunately there is a decline in uh, the growth in emerging markets. This is a big challenge. Turkey is an emerging market. And also uh, still we are much below than 2% global growth, which was the target of G20. The unemployment is increasing. Volatility of financial markets is threatening economic stability. What we want to achieve in this fragile economic context is to have sustainable economic growth. I am very proud uh, to have 4% economic growth in the third quarter of last year, which was a critical era for Turkey. And Turkey is now one of the fastest growing economy in the world. But this is not enough for us because our, our population is very dynamic. Therefore, we declared, as the new government, a very assertive reform agenda for one month, three months, six months, 12 months, and four years. This, to the, in Davos, I had several meetings with uh, international investors, yes, and also in London. I am happy to see that all these investors want to invest Turkey because they know and they see that Istanbul is rising, Turkey is rising, when the other cities in uh, Afro-Euro-Asia is, uh, is uh, declining or at least stagnant in economic sense. What we want to achieve through using our geography as an asset? We want to have energy pipelines going to Turkey, through Turkey, like TANAP, like BTC. We want the modern Silk Road from, from China up to London, Europe, through Turkey, with high-speed trains, with logistical hubs, and trade flow will go through Turkey. Again, we want to have a very well-connected transportation and logistical network, like Turkish Airlines is now uh, one of the biggest, second biggest in, uh, in Europe, and the biggest in the world in the sense of uh, the number of destinations, 280 destinations of Turkish Airlines is carrying the economic assets and interconnectedness between communities. And in Istanbul, we are building an international financial center to make Istanbul a center of economic, financial, trade, energy activities. Just point, uh, when we look at this uh, situation around Turkey and in global scene, uh, we are very confident that in next 10 years, 20 years, Turkey will be the hub of energy. Turkey will be the corridor of trade. Turkey will be the place of all international organizations, big uh, international investors uh, as the headquarters center. And Istanbul, in that sense, will be 
one of the main uh, financial, economic, uh, global capital city. In that sense, we are working very hard to make necessary structural, sectoral reforms. And our uh, uh, con recent uh, relation with EU is very promising with all these aspects, despite of the humanitarian, security, political, strategic, and economic challenges. We, what we, are, we see in Turkey as the new government the full, full side of the glass, and we will maximize the assets of our geography, the assets of our human capacity, and we will minimize the risks and threats of this conjecture, and we will be continuing to work for regional peace and global peace everywhere. Thank you very much. Prime Minister, Excellency, top of mind of the international community is of course the fight against Daesh. And we all know that Turkey is strongly engaged in the fight against terrorism. We have all seen the pictures of the recent terrorist attacks in Istanbul, which shocked your country but as well the global community. So allow me to ask, what are the additional steps in order to fight against terrorism? Of course, as I said, terrorism is a global threat. And no one and nowhere is immune of terrorist threat. Now we have threat from Daesh, from PKK, and Turkey is fighting against any terrorist organization. We realized this threat in 2013, September. Turkey was the first country declaring Daesh as a terrorist organization and the first country attacking Daesh inside Syria when they approached our border in 2013, uh, December. But unfortunately, international community was not quick enough, fast enough to respond to this challenge. And uh, later, after the fall in Mus of Mosul, uh, Daesh had a depth of uh, control from Iraq to Syria, uh, and the, it became a, a big uh, threat, a barbaric organiz uh, terrorist organization. Now, Syrian-Iraqi border is not there anymore, unfortunately, and therefore, we have to help the Iraqi government, and we have to fight against Daesh. As Turkey, what we are doing, uh, we are supporting moderate opposition forces in Syria who are fighting against Daesh positions, especially in the last two weeks, on close to our border. But meanwhile, especially Syrian regime and Russian airplanes are attacking moderate opposition rather than Daesh. This is a big challenge. First, there is a need of an international commitment, consensus, and coordination in our fight against Daesh. Uh, inside Turkey, we are uh, doing many operations so that they cannot infiltrate to Turkey. Border controls, as well as intelligence cooperation with all the allies and countries are going quite well. Despite of this, there has been several attacks and there is a need to do more uh, with all international community. Turkey will continue to fight against Daesh. One point here is our training camp in Iraq is just to, fight, to train people who will be fighting against Daesh. We fully respect in Iraqi territorial integrity, sovereignty, and uh, we are there to help to fight against Daesh. And another last point, let me say, is we want to see a consistent attitude and approach by all the parties to fight against terror. Today, PKK is attacking Turkish civilians, killing people in southeastern Anatolia, but we don't see a solidarity uh, like we, see, we are seeing against Daesh. We want all terrorist organizations uh, to be eliminated and marginalized first, then eliminated uh, around Turkey, and we will continue to fight against terrorism wherever it is. So thank you, Prime Minister. And you also mentioned that we need, of course, a solution for Syria. And we even discussed yesterday the diplomatic approach. Even under the tough circumstances regarding the tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia, but both remain committed or to come to a diplomatic solution. Maybe, or hopefully, we will have next week the Syria talks, so another diplomatic approach 
Can you encourage us that we will see in the near future even the tension you mentioned with Russia and Turkey that we come to a diplomatic solution for Syria? We will be working for any attempt to support any attempt for a diplomatic solution because there is no other country paying more price than Turkey regarding Syrian crisis. We want to have this solution. In fact, in the past, several times, we have initiated this type of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, attempts. Even we, at the early stage of Syrian crisis, we tried to convince Assad not to use military against his own people. But now all these things have passed. Unfortunately, because of the inability of international community, hundreds of thousands of Syrians being killed. Millions are refugees. Now it is time to find a solution. But for a solution, we have to identify the parties of the solution. One party is clear, regime. The other party is clear, opposition. Opposition means moderate Syrian opposition, genuine opposition. And this is Syrian National Coalition, which had the, their latest meeting in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, and a former Syrian prime minister who was prime minister until 2012, became uh, the chief negotiator on behalf of Syrian opposition. Now the issue is uh, some circles, including Russians, they want to spoil opposition side, putting some other elements in opposition side, like YPG, which has been collaborating with the regime and attacking moderate opposition, or some groups like Kadri Jamil or those who were appointed by the regime. So, rightly, opposition says, and we support these two arguments, Riyadh Hijabi, as the chief negotiator, says that they want to have to see two things. One is the end of siege in Madaya, so humanitarian access must be done. This is a middle century mentality, starvation strategy, and they, ha they have the right when this humanitarian tragedy is continuing, what will be the meaning of having a political dialogue? Second, they say that opposition, only moderate opposition can decide who will be on the opposition side. Nobody has the right to impose anything on opposition. And we, do, uh, we as Turkey, as the neighboring country, we do not accept any other opposition except Syrian National Coalition. There, that should be clear. If Others want to be part of the table, okay, they can be on regime side because they have been working with the regime, they have been collaborating with the regime. We do not intervene who will be coming from regime. But if they want our support as Turkey, we want to see only legitimate, moderate Syrian national opposition on the side of opposition. These are two barriers uh, which should be dealt, and I spoke with Secretary General Ban Ki-moon this morning, uh, and we are uh, in close contact with all the parties. We hope uh, there will be a Geneva three. Is in Geneva one. I was Minister of Foreign Affairs. I was the one who, among the team, we drafting the Geneva one communique. Geneva two was a failure. We hope Geneva three will be a success. Thank you. Thank you. And Excellency, you yourself mentioned your time when you have been Foreign Minister, and you have been here. I think it was two years ago, and you even mentioned at the time being the refugee crisis. Unfortunately, not everyone was listening to you, but now we know how important even two years ago this appeal has been. And uh, yesterday, your Deputy Prime Minister, His Excellency uh, Mr. Simcek, mentioned even what is Turkey now doing for the global community in terms of hosting refugees in the region. And you mentioned in your speech that you will be tomorrow in Europe and Germany. You will meet Chancellor Merkel. And we all know that there is an agreement between the European Union on the one hand and Turkey on the other hand. And there is discussion about 3 billion uh, euros. So my question is, right before this meeting, so what is the current update? And maybe based on this, your approach regarding the incoming uh, negotiations or discussions. Yes. Uh, first of all, this is for us a humanitarian duty. Turkey has been uh, the, a secure, safe haven for refugees when Kurds escaped from Saddam or when Bosniaks escaped from Milosevic. Now people escaping from Assad, they are coming to Turkey. Most welcome. We are sharing what we have. Uh, but 
why we were upset, as you said, for the last three, four years. We have been telling about this refugee crisis, but nobody was caring. You know why? There is a psychological threshold. Until recently, Syrian people, refugees in Turkey, they were thinking that one day there would be a solution in Syria and they would be going back. But when they lost their hope, they start to think, what will be my life in the future? Either in Turkey or somewhere else, wherever they can reach, therefore they start to move in every direction and that created an awareness. First of all, I am happy because of this global awareness and European awareness. And I thank to Angela Merkel for her leadership to uh, raise this awareness in Europe. Uh, and we had Turkish EU summit, not only on this issue, but that was one of the item. And we agreed on an action plan. I, uh, yesterday I mentioned in another meeting, uh, people are asking about 3 billion euro. Tomorrow in Berlin, I will not ask this question. For us, it is, an, it is not a, a money matter. It is not a money issue. We have spent 10, around 10 billion dollar. We can spend some more for the poor orphans, victims of Syrian tragedy. We are not asking money. We are negotiating money. We are not negotiating money. And for us, it is a humanitarian duty. Uh, therefore, the nucleus of the problem is not financial assistance. The, the center of the problem, the main question of the problem, what is our responsibility to address, to help these victims, these humanitarian uh, human, uh, uh, tragedy? This is the issue. And we are not just asking money. We are, we, we are asking solidarity. We are asking to have, to have a sense of common destiny. And in this sense, we, in our action plan, there were certain steps being take, should be taken by Turkey, by EU. One of them, which we did, not because of European request, but it was planned before to give working permissions to Syrian refugees, and we did it last week. Also, we are implementing for the third, for Syrians coming from the third country, we are implementing visa, because we realize that they are misusing this opportunity. They are coming to airport and trying to go directly to agency, and it is creating disasters. We will take all the measures, but the discussion in EU and in public opinion in, in Europe, European countries, including Germany, is continuing. Tomorrow we will be sharing all this with uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, Chancellor uh, with uh, Angela Merkel, we will be talking with my dear colleague, uh, Chancellor, and uh, we hope uh, the next steps will be uh, concrete steps to address this issue. But it is not a German issue. It is not a Turkish issue. It is not even now just a Syrian issue. It is a global issue, and we have to work together. As I said, I always appreciate the new rising global awareness, and for uh, my dear colleague, uh, Chancellor Merkel's uh, leadership, to uh, create this events. Thank you, Excellency. And maybe the last question to end on a very positive note. Would you agree that even though this humanitarian tragedy, geopolitical challenges, it is at the same time some kind of opportunity to come closer together? What you mentioned, joint action between not only Europe and Turkey, but the entire region, it's Central Asia, what you mentioned, even China. So that is really, again, an opportunity to come together as a global community? Yes. This is, therefore, we are hosting humanitarian summit. And today, uh, what they, it was called global century, global village, labor market is flexible everywhere. Nobody can have <coughs> walls or boundaries. Uh, people will migrate. People will go wherever they can find job. It is important is how to regulate, how to make this in a regular manner. And wise leadership is important here. Not just political decision-making process, but there should be an ethical perspective of political issues. If I don't feel the pain of the Syrian babies, children, my political decision will not be human. First, we have to feel the, uh, like, like Island, the small, the body of the uh, uh, Syrian boy, three years old. 
you have twins, I have children. When I look at, my, at the face of my daughters and son, my children, I see the faces of Syrian children. If my children sleep without any risk of security, we have to provide the same security for Syrian children and baby. So before being political uh, beings or uh, figures, we are human beings. Unfortunately, for Syria, we have, I have to say this, this human aspect of the issue has been forgotten. We ignore them until they come to our door. We didn't want to see chemical weapons killing children, people until Syrian uh, Daesh did emerge as a security risk uh, everywhere in our capitals. But the source, the root cause of all this crisis is war crimes committed by a regime. There is a need of a review of international humanitarian law, and there is a need of a new political awareness based on human conscience, rather than pragmatism, opportunism, or just uh, talking for the purpose of talking. Now what we need is action, humanitarian action for all human beings in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in Latin America, in Pacific Islands, wherever human beings need our assistance. So thank you so much, Prime Minister. Thank you for this very encouraging message. So ladies and gentlemen, a big applause to the Prime Minister of Turkey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.